As I said, I think I'm blessed, and I hope that you as players felt you were blessed with the people that you worked with and that you played with. And uh, because it's, it's a special thing to come together with a football team. And, you know, it doesn't always turn out right, but uh, I think the things that you do and the time that you did it, uh, it was fantastic. So I know it's a, a busy day and a lot of good things, and the good things we were hoping are going to be the Rams taking out Brian. Yeah. some people I have to thank. One of them, of course, is Coach Griffin, who took a chance on a young 27-year-old uh, defensive back coach uh, 40 years ago. And I, I thank you for that opportunity, Coach. <laughs> Listen, I started working on this about six or seven months ago, and there are, uh, there's, there's four people here that really did the bulk of the work. And the first one is right here next to me. And she probably never wants to see my phone number come up on her phone again. Because <laughs> I was just a pain in her side, I'm sure. So uh, Amy Simonini, who's uh, over at Ohio Day Engagement. Garrett Waller. Where's, is Garrett here still? Come on over here. The last one is uh, Jeff. Where are you, Jeff? Jeff did quite a bit of work on the phones and getting hold of people and that kind of stuff. solemnly in that we have lost 12 players, to my knowledge, from our 80s teams. Johnny Rogers, Barney Rinaldi, Rich Pelzer, Tony DeLuca, Scott De Silva, Greg Sturgis, Rich Capilongo, Bill Maker, Tommy Niles, Damon Hewlett, Brian Foster, Tim Rishton, Coach Larry Caswell, Tim Rishton's here. Coach Ed Cavanaugh, and Coach Downey. And so if we could for one second bow our heads and remember them because they are a big part of this. Dan Merlin. Dan Merlin. Another one. I'm sorry I didn't know that. Coach Cobb. Coach Cobb. Yeah. And Tim's one not second. dead, right? He's here. Okay. Thank you so much. We will never forget them. Tim got also, no. a couple of our players, Artie Bell Maybe he is struggling with some cancer right now, so get some prayers to him. And Randy Rocha, I've talked with Randy just this week. He has throat cancer right now. When I talk to him, he talks like this. He can't talk to him. So, but he says he's coming along. He just can't be at, at, uh, around a lot of people. So uh, keep prayers for them. So listen, we're here today because it was 40 years ago when I first came here. Our first game we opened up against Boise State. They got us pretty good out there at Boise. And then our last game of that season was a Pocatello, Idaho. If we'd have stayed out of the state of Idaho, Griff, we'd have been all right. <laughs> but that was the first year. So I sit, sat around thinking about this. I got a lot of time on my hands since I'm retired. And I decided, like John Belushi said in Blues Brothers, we need to get the band back together. And that's what I set out to do. I miss football, I miss it tremendously, and we have 180 people here today, I think over 180, and I know there's over 100 players. So thank you so much for coming. So I, the more I th thought about this, I thought we gotta have a little, a little fun with this. So I decided in my own mind, I was gonna make some awards. So everybody won't agree with this, but I don't really care. So, the first one, the first one is the person who traveled the farthest, Jim Muse, 3,794 miles. And 
and he came from what? Where? What country? Switzerland. Switzerland. How about that? <laughs> Mark Denon thought he was going to get that award from California, but that wasn't going to happen. Second award was an award I thought was, who was the biggest smack talker in all my years here? And there was not any competition for this award. Not only could he talk the talk, he could walk the walk. Chucky e. Watson. <laughs> so proud of him because from where he came, where he came from, to where he is now, he works over in the engineering department, I may tell you that was a long road traveled and he did a heck of a job, so I'm very, very proud of him. I wanted to give a longevity award, and the first guy I'm going to give this to, I'm giving out two of them. When I first came here, this guy walked out of the weight room and shook my hand and said, I'm so-and-so, um, Coach Karras, pleased to meet you, welcome. And he has been affiliated with the university ever since. Later, he coached with us, actually was one of my housemates for several years, and I love him to death, Terry Lynch, where are you? this award came to us in 82 the year after I started he was my equipment manager at first and he then became the running backs coach and has been a lifelong friend Ray Carleglio So could I. So here were the candidates for the award. Kevin Smith. Yeah. Kevin called me and told me he was a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin holds several records here, the interception record and the career interception record, and he had a great coach, and that was a big reason why. <laughs> Tommy Earhart. Who's Tommy? Tommy was a candidate, holds about every passing record there is here. Everybody would guess him. Brian Foster, God rest his soul, his records will never be broken, probably. Mike Cassidy, up in Montana, 88 yard punt. You never see that again. But there's one record, and this is one special guy. And he set a record that will never be broken. 109 yard interception return against New Hampshire. Guy Carbone. that because Kevin Smith will sneak away and try to take it. <laughs> this, the next award I had was what I called the softest hands award. We had some great receivers, great players, and, and some players were just, I mean, when the ball came to them, you could hear it. And some players, when the ball would come to them, you could hear it. You couldn't even hear it. So the candidates for this were Kevin Smith, <laughs> Tony DiMaggio, and I don't know if I've seen Tony yet. Is he here? He's here. He's here. Tony! Hey. Tony DiMaggio. When you talk about catch radius, he he started catch radius. You could throw that ball anywhere and he could go get it, honest to goodness. Uh, Tony met Damian Riley. Right out of Nassau Community College. 
Tom Mutt. Hey. Early receiver in the early 80s, softest hands ever. And I had Civitella on here too because he would have complained if I didn't. <laughs> he was supposed to show, but he didn't. So he's not getting any award. <laughs> but in the end, I decided it was Kevin Smith. Oh. <laughs> 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 biggest hitter award. I asked a lot of guys to say, hey, hey, who do you think was the biggest hitter? Who were the candidates? Who were? And almost every single guy said on the very first thing, this thing. Bernie Moran. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie. He's an assassin. Hey. Hey. Here. Come on up here, buddy. He probably could not play today, and I probably could not coach the way I coached and he played, because he ended some guys' careers. He was a ferocious, ferocious hitter. Everybody cheered when he went to it's been a Long, long discussion I appreciate the on who the best corner was that I ever coached. Him. And I mean, this has been controversial. The candidates: Kevin Smith, <laughs> Chili Chucky Watson, and those two have been going at it. Jim Roberson, who is in London, could not get out of the country. I don't know if that's because of the travel. Things are, he's in a little trouble there, but <laughs> could be either. Uh, Tony Hill, who played free and corner, but he was also a candidate. Cal Whitfield, great one early on, first couple years here. Raywin Williams, all candidates. I love them all, and I cannot make a decision, so I'm not giving that award up. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what I get. This, this is what I get. I would lose a lot of friends if I made one. That's nice. Right, this, this last award. I, I thought long and hard about this. I, I just came up with it one night. Actually, I woke up at 3 in the morning. I'm thinking about this thing, and I'm thinking, i got to give out one, one more award. And this I call the Yankee Conference Award. And um, this guy, my first year here, was a corner and all Yankee Conference and as good as they come. And the second year, Coach Griff took him over to offense, and he was the all Yankee Conference tailback. He was one of the all-time great players here. All-time great players here. Anybody know who he is? Cal Winfield. Okay, I'll try to wind this up here. Um, I have many, many fond memories of my nine years here. Many. And that's why we're here today. I'm a real selfish son of a gun. I miss football. I miss these, these people. Um, and one thing I want to make absolutely clear is every single guy in this room, whether you were a starter or a scout team player or whatever, you all contributed greatly to our success. And some guys say, well, I was on the scout team for a couple of years. Yeah, but you contributed. You were important to what we did. And I want to make sure everybody leaves here knowing that everybody was important. And that's why I just didn't contact the starters to come back here. I contacted everybody. 250 emails, 1,000 texts I sent out to try to get all of you. <laughs> We won three championships. A lot of you were a part of those. But you were all part of the greatest decade in football history at the university. And no one can ever take that from you. Don't ever forget that. You're very, very special. And many of you have a couple rings to, to, 
to go with it. So I thank you, thank you very much for that. The 83 team might have been the best defense we've ever had. You know, when you stop and think about it, Charlie Bounty, Bob Dana, Tony DeLuca, the secondary we had, Jerry Favreau, I mean, we were blessed. 83, we had the six overtime game. Longest game in college football history. Two. Until a couple of years ago. <laughs> and I'm up in the booth, and I say to the coach next to me, the offense, what did he call? He says he called 22 reverse. I said, he called what? <laughs> this is on the goal line for the extra point. I said, he called what? Yes, touchdown! <laughs> DJ Del Santo! <laughs> DJ, where are you? Right there. <laughs> He's the coolest coach in Rhode Island. <laughs> Six overtimes. That was one of my fondest memories. One of my other fondest memories, and this has gone in roundabout for a couple of days, is Coach Adrian and I, we took on all challengers in two on two basketball in our five years here. <laughs> they, they don't like to hear this because there was only one team that beat us in five years. One team. But those memories of competing against those guys and playing with them and having fun with them off the field is is a very special memory for both of us, especially since we kick their butts most of the time. So that, we'll let that lie right there. As we coached here with Coach Griffin as our leader, we tried to set a culture here, and I could see that we succeeded. Our process, the culture that we set, you grabbed onto. That's why you're here today. I see doctors and lawyers and all kinds of successful people here, people working at the university, Kevin Smith, Earl Smith, uh, Chucky, all working at the university. You were successful. You grabbed onto that process and the culture was set and that's why we're here. And that's why you've seen so much love and hugs and th that's what it's all about. A lot of people ask you, how do you measure your program? Well, you can measure it on wins and losses, but you measure it by are these guys good husbands? Are they good, good men? Are they good fathers? They love each other, and, and I've seen all that in the last two days. So those are special memories for me. I love coaching here. I love coaching the DBs. I love the one-on-one -on -one practices against the quarterbacks and the seven-on-seven -seven where all the smack talk was going on. No, you didn't. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it all. I had always hoped throughout my career that in some way I could positively influence or impact players' lives. What I found out was they impacted and influenced me much more than I did them. Much more. Than I know for some of you, you know, it costs you a lot of money, you travel a long way, but you've, you've made me very happy. <laughs> very happy. <laughs> Amy's going to close this out for us, and I just want to say, before we go over to the field, to the game, I, I think if we file out this way, I'd like to get some pictures. All right, uh, so maybe some position pictures, this and that. And the other thing, for all the players right now, take your phones out right now. Take them out. Or pencil and paper. And I, I want to give you my phone number because you're going to take a lot of pictures through this weekend and this day. And I want to see the pictures. Don't send them to me today or tomorrow because my phone will blow up. But I want to see those because I won't get to see them all. And that's, it's important to me. And in turn, I would be more than happy to send them to you. My number is 440-781-0464. Please, please send me those photos. 0464. I'm going to turn it over to Amy and thank her again for all she did.
event of this scale, you have a committee. That's the committee, right there. Tim did an awesome job. I have a nice gift for Tim as well, so you have to see me later. But now it's time to eat. I know if everyone wants to make it to kickoff, we're going to have to eat dinner. So in order to do this in the most organized fashion, we have two buffets set up. We're going to start with people in the back of the room, please, so that they can get their food, come in, so everyone needs to find a seat when you have a chance. There's a bunch of seats up front at all these tables. 